Hello everyone. My name is Ram Sri and welcome to the course Practical Introduction to Natural Language Processing. Very excited that you are here. Let's get started. Awesome. Before moving forward, let me just take a quick minute to introduce myself. I am Ram Sri and I am currently building two revenue making NLP SaaS apps, question.ai and supermeme.ai. And prior to this, I've worked in US, Singapore and India, about 10 years of experience in data science, computer vision and machine learning. And I'm also a content developer across various social media platforms, uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn and Medium. And uh, I share daily NLP tips and AI SaaS building tips. So feel free to follow me on there. If you want to know the link to my socials, please find them at ramsri.ai. Let's understand what you will achieve once you go through and finish the course. So the biggest transformation is that you can go from a Python developer with programming knowledge in Python to a junior NLP data scientist with practical projects that we uh, go through in the course. And you'll become confident to take on ownership of NLP projects and deliver them end to end. By end to end, I mean from data collection to uh, developing a model or understanding things and uh, finally deploying it as an API as well. And we'll be taking a unique product based learning approach. You'll get to know more about that approach soon. Overall, the course has more than 15 hours plus video content and I'll make sure that I keep adding relevant content as and when need arises and based on popular demand as well. And what are the prerequisites for this course? So the biggest prerequisite is that you should be familiar with Python and you should have uh, Python programming skills and some exposure to algorithms and data structure uh, also helps especially working with lists and dictionaries and uh, familiarity with Python libraries and installation via pip etc. So in general three simple things Python programming experience some decent exposure to algorithms and data structures and uh, some familiarity with Python libraries and installation of them. And what does the course focus on? The course primarily focuses on practical NLP projects and we'll take a product based learning approach. What this simply means is that you will become an NLP chef. So you'll be able to use NLP algorithms and build applications on top of that. The course focus is building applications on top of NLP algorithms. Although we understand algorithms on a high level and delve uh, deeper as necessary. It is important to make sure that uh, the course focuses on applied NLP. So there won't be any discussions on heavy mathematics behind the algorithms, etc. I want to make sure that we are on the same page with that. As opposed to someone who grows crops and produces them, you will become a chef who will use the ingredients and build some recipes from it. Here ingredients translate to algorithms and recipes translate to applied NLP products or projects that we are going to build. And I'll be providing you with NLP project ideas that you can implement and add on to your resume. And if you don't understand something, please ask questions on the course platform or even in the Slack channel that we are going to provide and I shall try my best to answer them in the shortest possible time. So let's discuss a little bit about the community and virtual office hours. So we'll have bi-weekly or monthly group calls to clarify any doubts that you might have or offer general NLP mentorship for the course takers. And uh, please join the course uh, Slack channel that will be that is provided for you. And uh, constantly I'll be sharing relevant NLP information. It could be master classes or podcasts or community events 
or even open job roles uh, if anyone reaches out to me to share with the NLP community about open roles or if you are looking for jobs as well you can post in the slack channel in the relevant uh, sub channels Awesome. Let's get to the concept of product based learning. What exactly is product based learning? So the traditional courses follow this approach of where some theory is taught and then you try to do a small project on top of that. We'll take a slightly different approach, which is we will essentially build a product and then learn algorithms and use those algorithms to develop features in the product. And the product we are going to build is called moviepro.ai. In short, it's an AI based platform to analyze and organize movie scripts. Assume some of the biggest uh, production movie production houses like Paramount Pictures or Disney or Universal Studios. Assume that you are building an AI based platform for them. So they'll have quite a lot of movie scripts. In short, there is quite a lot of movie related information, scripts and uh, casting or director uh, details, etc. And we'll see how we can build a platform in order to be able to, you know, find similar movies to a given script or identify main characters from the movie so that you can easily look for whom to cast, etc. And also plan shoot locations visualize who are the best suitable directors for a given script etc so in short we'll learn nlp techniques and progressively add them as features to the moviepro.ai product and you'll learn about an interesting tool called streamlit streamlit is used to create ui interfaces with pure python code so it's almost like you can build an internal app uh, with Streamlit with some UI UX. Awesome. With that, I welcome you to the course and I'll see you in the next lecture. Welcome everyone to this section where we discuss the curriculum of practical introduction to NLP course. So the course is divided into four modules and module one will go over um, data set creation where we'll see how we can create uh, new data sets using three different methods one is using coding and one is using without any code with tools like parse hub and the other thing is actually using gpt3 to create novel data sets and when using coding we'll use beautiful soup to parse data from web pages and uh, in module one we'll also discuss more on TF-IDF and other things. We'll look into each of the module in detail in a minute. But before that, let's understand on a high level. So when it comes to module one, essentially we are looking at converting any text into vector uh, using sparse vector algorithms like TF-IDF, etc. Everything will be evident to you soon once we get to that section. And module two will focus heavily on uh, data visualization. So how can you convert any document or content that you have into a two dimensional or three dimensional vector? And how can you visualize it in a 2D grid, etc. For example, you can put together movies and directors together and kind of see the associations etc and we will also look at few practical applications of word vectors and ner named entity recognition we'll see what it is in the future and module 3 will focus uh, heavily on more advanced algorithms to convert text into a vector by that i mean you can take any sentence, word or a paragraph and convert it into an array of numbers. That's what I mean when I mean vector. And what's the advantage of converting text into vectors is that now you can treat it as a n-dimensional data point 
now you can do comparisons of how close two things are uh, with respect to each other etc so you can do all kind of just like if you have 2d points mapped you know the distance between the points and you know how far one point is from another when compared to another point etc similarly you can do all these kind of comparisons once you are able to convert any text into a vector of n dimensions and the biggest thing to remember is that um, we'll see how we can do the same vectorization of any text using tfidf in module 1 and advanced algorithms like sentence transformers in module 3 so module 1 and module 3 will complement each other where we'll see how module 3 has evolved uh, to be better than what module 1 algorithm uses so the same things that we are going to do in module 1 we'll do it better in module 3 and module 4 specifically focuses on teaching advanced language models like GPT-3 uh, how we can use them and how we can leverage uh, GPT-3 to build applications and the biggest thing is that we are going to see how we can convert code into an API it could be uh, GPT-3 code once we develop something in the GPT-3 dashboard how can we convert that into an API so for those who are unaware GPT-3 is an advanced language model for doing text generation tasks by that I mean like paraphrasing and other things etc and module 4 is very interesting because we are also going to see uh, how we can go from algorithm to API and then from API to a product using no code tools like bubble.io on a high level we are going to cover all these topics data set creation data visualization and using models to build some algorithms and also do production deployment let's get into each of these modules and understand them a little bit better so in module one the first topic that we are going to discuss is uh, data set creation of course there'll be an introduction introductory lecture after this one on uh, basic terms in nlp and what are the different terms like ner named entity recognition and uh, several other things like co-reference resolution all these things what do they mean so we'll understand nlp and its various subtopics then uh, we'll introduce the goal of building our moviepro.ai product the nlp powered application for movie production houses like universal studios disney etc then we will see three different methods to collect data sets one is using code with tools like uh, with libraries like beautiful soup and the other is uh, using no code tools just scrapers uh, like parsub and we'll see what are the advantages of them when compared to using code and we will also take a brief look at how you can generate novel data sets using advanced text generation algorithms like uh, GPT-3 and we'll also build our first UI uh, with Streamlit where you can search for similar movie plots etc and in module one the second topic that we are going to look at is tfidf term frequency inverse document frequency uh, don't worry if you don't understand this term at all we are going to see what it does essentially it is going to convert any given document uh, text or movie plot in our case into a vector that is n dimensional uh, number um, a list of numbers actually and you will see how a single algorithm like tfidf can be used to extract important keywords from the movie plot or text and how we can summarize uh, any movie plot or text and also find similar movie plots uh, using tfidf algorithm so extracting keywords doing summarization and finding similar movies all these things can be done with a basic algorithm like tfidf 
and the biggest thing that we are going to see is that no need to remember any mathematical equations for tfidf we are going to very intuitively build a tfidf and understand all the things that are necessary the mathematical equations etc and arrive at the final equation all using intuition and module one will have a project where we calculate sentence diversity using n grams we'll get introduced to the idea of n grams and uh, uh, we'll use a pre-trained paraphraser you don't need to really understand that you can just use the code but the biggest thing is that as paraphraser generates multiple sentences we will see how we can rank them based on the most diverse ones using n-gram approach and module 2 the first section involves visualization so most people do not understand but visualization is a very very crucial aspect of model building where you can easily identify any anomalies or bad data points that we collected so we are going to convert all the movie plots each movie plot will be converted into just a 2d number two dimensional number or three dimensional number and we are going to see it on a grid uh, so it will be very easy to see which movie plots are close to each other etc and this is where we get used to sentence uh, we get introduced to sentence transformers that can convert a full document into a vector and uh, we'll also see how we can have two different categories of text that means we can plot both movie plots as well as the directors and their descriptions on a single plot and we will see the power of visualization where you can see for a given movie uh, which director is closest uh, in terms of the description of the director etc and you can kind of see how uh, on a two dimensional plane you can easily see for a given movie who are the potential directors you need to evaluate similarly you can do the same thing with cast and crew and the module 2 the project in it involves adapting a movie plot into another country or locale simply what that means is that a lot of times movies are dubbed into another language for example a hollywood movie in english could be dubbed into hindi uh, bollywood movie so what happens is that you need to do something called as localization which is changing all the places if los angeles is mentioned perhaps you want to use delhi or mumbai similarly if you're dubbing it into another region uh, maybe china you need to use similar um, shanghai or something like that so how can you automatically use word vectors and uh, convert these names of the people as well as locations and other things like currency etc into a different locale uh, locale basically uh, doing something like dubbing and also converting the names places and other things it will be a good uh, utilization of uh, both named entity recognition algorithm as well as word vectors and module 3 whatever we have done with tfidf which is uh, building similar uh, building a recommendation system for identifying similar movie plots to a given movie plot and uh, all those things extracting keywords from a movie plot all those things we are going to do with advanced algorithm like algorithms like sentence transformers and we'll also do topic modeling on movie plots so automatically can you categorize movies into their genres like horror romance comedy things like that can you automatically group uh, all the movies that we have into these different segments that's what topic modeling is we are going to see it in detail and module 3 will also see an interesting use case with uh, sentence transformers uh, as well as you know word edit distance algorithms where you can give a phrase answer or etc for a quiz 
and if people if students try to answer your quiz and if they enter an answer can you automatically grade them and get the score of how close the student entered answer is to your original answer and in module 4 we will learn uh, one of the most advanced text generation algorithm called as GPT-3 and how you can use the GPT-3 API to build products on top of that. So you'll be equipped with uh, building new SaaS apps using GPT-3 and we'll go from converting code into an API and that API will be converted into a production app with uh, no code tool like bubble.io awesome i i hope you got a very strong understanding of what four of the modules uh, stand for so in short we are going to cover everything from tfidf to sentence transformers to gpt3 to deployment and uh, when it comes to topic we are going to touch upon everything from data creation to data visualization to building algorithms using models to again deploying a production app. Uh, that's about the curriculum in short. Hope you are as excited as I am and I'll see you in the next section. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to the introduction of natural language processing let's enter into NLP first of all what is natural language processing what comes into your mind when you think about natural language processing so let's just divide the term natural language and processing so whenever we humans think of natural language speech text and perhaps to some extent sign language also comes into how we communicate between each other so basically NLP is a subfield of AI that uses algorithms to you know understand interpret and modify human language and uh, when it comes to human language like I mentioned there's text speech and sign language and all these variations uh, well of course in this course we are going to primarily focus only on text data so when we mention natural language processing in our course it refers to understanding text data whatever as we humans understand and interpret we want algorithms to evolve at the same level of understanding capabilities and that's our goal with natural language processing to make machines or computers understand and interpret natural language as good as humans. You might have already seen a lot of natural language processing applications in and around us. For example, if you take voice assistants like Alexa, Siri, Google Home, where you ask it to do something, turn off the lights or play a song, all these things are real world applications of NLP and uh, chatbots are another popular thing where you might visit a website and you ask a question and sometimes uh, automatically you are redirected to payments page or uh, you know cancellation page or something like that depending on what you're trying to ask chatbots uh, respond to you and sometimes redirect you to the right uh, page and again sentiment analysis is one more popular topic within NLP for those who do not understand uh, sentiment analysis it's basically categorizing any text content into usually three different sentiments positive neutral or negative let's say someone is talking about a movie review on uh, Google they are posting about their movie reviews you want to automatically identify the sentiment and uh, categorize how many people are talking positively positively about the movie negatively about the movie neutral about the movie similarly on google play store etc if you have an app similarly you can do sentiment analysis tasks on that to 
gauge what people are thinking about your app then uh, text summarization algorithms are also very popular where sometimes you don't want to read the whole article and you want to get an automatic summary and uh, another popular use case is machine translation so for example google translate when visiting different countries converting uh, text or the usual used words that you speak in your language to another language so that you can navigate easily in a new country or state etc all these are popular applications of nlp so the applications are all around us and they have been there for quite some time only thing is that with time we get better so let's get an overview of all the natural language processing terminology that's used for example let's just take the plot of the movie batman begins uh, let's just read it as a child in gotham city bruce wayne falls down a drywell and is attacked by a swarm of bats so as soon as you are reading this we humans understand that Got gotham city is a place bruce wayne is a person uh, falls down uh, it's a verb and drywell is a noun so you interpret quite a lot of things from this that and also is attacked by a swarm of bats so you know that it's a negative sentiment here that's going on similarly as you read you understand and interpret many things right so for all these things that we humans interpret we have come up with terminology in nlp and we'll see them in just a second so the first thing is named entity recognition ner uh, you might have heard it you might not have heard it but what it simply means is that if you can identify entities those entities could be person time date organization or location gp stands for geopolitical entity essentially it's like a location so you can see that if you use any our algorithms in nlp you can automatically identify gotham city as a plane bruce wayne as a person and uh, mafia is an organization and uh, there are other person names like alfred pennyworth and 14 years later is a date so essentially you can train your own NER algorithm while also fixing the entities that you want to identify. Here they are identifying person, uh, geopolitical entity, organization, date, etc. as entities. But for example, let's say if you have medical text, maybe you want to identify disease, you want to identify the um, dosage of a particular medicine and other things. So you can create your own entities and train a named entity recognition model and uh, what those entities are depends quite a lot on what your use case is and the second thing is parts of speech tagging so essentially as soon as you read this sentence as a child in gotham city bruce wayne falls you know that child is a noun adp in is like add position and gotham city is proper noun again in noun you have common noun proper noun and other things and you know that comma is a punctuation false is a verb so again this thing comes under parts of speech tagging pos so ner named entity recognition and pos parts of speech tagging these are like popular uh, acronyms that are used in nlp and just remember these things and the other another interesting thing is coreference resolution well this term sounds complex but it essentially means identifying pronouns what that means is if you read this sentence you know that uh, uh, bruce wayne is attacked by a swarm of bats developing a fear of them what does this pronoun them refer to it refers to bats actually and attending the opera his parents thomas and martha bruce uh, becomes frightened so his here 
his refers to bruce and again bruce parents in front of him him refers to bruce so all these pronouns are resolved to their original nouns uh, in this case them refers to bats his and him refers to bruce so essentially if you identify what each pronoun is referring to so what's the corresponding noun that the pronoun is referring referring to that's called as coreference resolution nothing too complex and uh, let's uh, take a small mind exercise uh, how do you identify the main character or the protagonist of a movie or an article so just give a thought okay let's use two things that we learned already to identify the main character so the first thing is given any article first resolve all the pronouns to their original nouns that's the first thing second thing is get a counter of all the persons uh, that is the named entity that is tagged as person and get a count of them so here you see that bruce wayne is the protagonist and you know that every time his him occurs you are going to replace that with bruce wayne as well and you know that uh, bruce wayne maybe it occurs 10 times or 15 times in this paragraph and uh, so using a combination of named entity recognition where you are identifying person and also resolving the pronouns to the corresponding person you are able to get the count of a person in an article and most likely the person with the highest count uh, that is mentioned in the article is the protagonist or the main character of the movie or article awesome moving ahead uh, keyword and key phrase ex extraction is also another popular nlp use case so for example if you're reading through this you will easily recognize as a human that uh, there are some keywords or key phrases in this article like gotham city bruce Wayne, and swarm of bats dry well opera frightened so keywords can come from any parts of speech not necessarily nouns for example frightened uh, all these are not nouns masquerading etc whereas uh, swarm of bats is actually a noun phrase uh, similarly dry well is also a noun phrase so keyword is basically if you have only one parts of speech in that that's keyword whereas key phrase refers to anything like noun phrase or verb phrase where an adjective could be combined with the noun or verb could be num combined with noun to give the noun phrase or verb phrase etc those are key phrases another popular use case of uh, nlp is classification uh, automatic classification and uh, especially sentiment analysis you can automatically read the sentence and you know that this said the sentiment of this sentence is negative and uh, similarly you can do many classification tasks for example intent classification is another example let's say in chatbot you are asking a query and that query needs to be the intent of the query needs to be classified so that uh, the company can route your question to the appropriate team whether it is sales payments or website uh, development or things like that so identifying the intent from what you ask is also another classification problem similarly there are several classification tasks in nlp that you can do okay moving further on topic modeling for example if you just pick up the batman begins movie and you just start reading through it you will come across uh, words like attack bats frightened masquerading and all these things and automatically if you are trying to think about a genre for the movie you know that it comes under like adventure action or horror etc right 
So topic modeling essentially means if you have, let's say a lot of documents, can you automatically cluster the documents and can you extract the top keywords from those documents and automatically give them a label. It, it could be a single label or it could be multiple labels. For example, in our movie plots case, we can take, let's say 3000 movies and automatically cluster them. And from each cluster, that is the collection of movies, extract the top uh, keywords, um, verbs or nouns either ways and identify it into a particular genre. For example, romance might have different keywords and from the keywords itself, you can automatically identify the topics or genre, right? Uh, so that essentially is topic modeling. You have some documents, you extract some keywords and based on the, those keywords, you give some topic labels. Awesome. Another interesting concept in natural language processing is actually word sense disambiguation, WSD. So for example, if you take the word bat, in the first sentence, Bruce Wayne was attacked by a bat while he was walking in a cave. Um, here, bat refers to uh, the nocturnal mammal, the flying bat. And uh, if you take sentence two, a local gang attacked Bruce Wayne with a bat. Here, bat rep refers to a club used for hitting a ball in various games, right? So the physical bat. So here, the same word bat, when used in different context, has different contextual meaning. And uh, we need to actually disambiguate this word. For example, if a given word like bat has multiple meanings, one could be a mammal, one could be a, a thing used to hit a ball, then depending on the sentence, you need to disambiguate what's the correct sense or contextual meaning for that word. So that exactly is the problem of word sense disambiguation. For example, I'm going to this uh, link here, WordNet, uh, just Google WordNet search and you can enter any word like bat or any disambiguated words, for example, even mouse. Mouse could mean computer mouse or it could mean uh, the animal mouse as well. So you'll get all the various senses or contextual meanings that are available. It could be in noun, verb or adjective, etc. You'll you see that bat has almost uh, or almost 10 different meanings when used in different contexts com combining nouns and verbs. Okay, moving further on, embeddings. So embeddings is a very, very interesting and special topic because the moment we are able to convert a given word or sentence or a paragraph or the full document into a vector, that is a combination of numbers. This is an n-dimensional array. Now you can compare vectors among each other to see how close they are together or how far they are together. So you can do mathematical app operations on these words or sentences or documents to find similar documents and other things, etc. So it's a very powerful concept. And word to vec is an algorithm that can take in a word or a small phrase and convert that into a vector automatically. And sentence to vec is similar. It can take a whole sentence and convert that into a vector. Usually this vector is of, you know, 360 dimensions or 768 dimensions popularly. So usually this is like, uh, an n-dimensional vector and n could be 768 or 1024 etc and in the higher dimensional space you can compare vectors among each other using cosine similarity and other distance metrics and doc to vec is similar where you can take the whole document and convert that into a vector and embeddings that is converting word sentence or document into a vector is 
one of the very very fundamental and crucial aspects of nlp and lot of algorithms are based on this okay moving further on recommendation systems again finding similar items is another popular use case of nlp for example if you have batman begins plot you can automatically convert that into a vector and you can convert all the movie plots into vectors again and find similar vectors and uh, you can get the the closest vector to batman begins is actually the sequel dark knight so recommending similar movies um and uh, this is a popular use of recommendation system that's based on nlp of course real world recommendation systems might use quite a lot of factors and there might be a weightage factor combining all of those into a single score but simply put you can build recommendation systems that are purely based on nlp when there's when they are text based systems etc and uh, coming to text generation systems this is also one of the very popular use case of nlp you might have seen examples where google translate can convert this sentence into uh, spanish or any other language so text generation systems take in input as text and generate text as output that text could be in a could be in a different language then that's called as translation it could be rewritten with a different choice of words then that's called as paraphrasing and there are several other use cases of text generation systems beyond this and let's get to the interesting part of language model so what exactly is a language model a language model is nothing but given some input sequence of words it is it will predict the next word for example if uh, you as a human are given this sentence and asked to fill in this you might think about several words that could come in here for example fear and other things and similarly the longer the context is your choice of words that you can fill in becomes lesser and lesser and you become conf- more and more confident about uh, filling in a particular word similarly language models are just trained to predict the next word so they are next word prediction systems but what happens is that the longer the context is the better the next word prediction is and if you just recursively keep on predicting the next word what happens is that you will form a coherent paragraph or sentence and language models are just trained to do that which is given some input sentence it will extend that sentence and keep adding words continuously and the better a language model is the more coherent the text generated um, is and you will feel that it's almost generated by humans and this other thing is chatbot or conversational ai uh, for example if you built a moviepro.ai chatbot i just simulated that here and you have movie plot from the movie plot you can ask questions and you can automatically retrieve the answers as well using nlp for example if you have some documentation in your company people are if people are coming on to your chatbot and asking questions you can automatically return the correct answer for example how many days of refund policy do you give and if your documentation is already there and the 14 days is the correct answer you can just use question answering system that is as a middle layer that will answer the questions in the chatbot asked by real users with answers from your own documentation this is also a popular use case of ai i mean nlp quite often people say that when you are introducing nlp you need to understand these popular terms very well Uh, like tokenization lemmatization and these things that are here but uh, we'll take a very interesting approach because all these things will make sense as we do projects so instead of theoretically understanding them we'll stumble upon them in the course as we progress naturally and we will see what they mean but 
instead of just leaving you hanging let me just give a 30 second introduction about these topics so tokenization let's say if you have text and text is composed of words right so to a token is the the smallest division of the text if you want to call sometimes it could be word or sometimes it could be even sub word so not necessarily tokens means words for example if you have a word like swimming it could be dividing it could be divided into swim plus ing in that case swim is the token so depending on your use case tokens are just words or they could be even subdivided from the words as well lemmatization is essentially converting um, words like swimming ran etc into their root form for example swimming is swim and ran is run etc and stemming is again similar to lemmatization the only difference is that lemmatization always converts to a root form that is a dictionary word whereas stemming might just convert it into a word that doesn't exist in exist in dictionary maybe it could be even shorter form of the word that's available in dictionary and engrams basically means if you have a sentence for example ramsri is going to college if you just take the two words ramsri is that's a bigram if you take the word ramsri it's unigram and if you take three words ramsri is going that's a trigram so engrams are basically combination of n sequential words that you split and bag of words is essentially if you have a document but you do not preserve the sequence of the words that occur in the document and you just mix it up and maybe take counter or frequency of a certain word etc basically a, a bag of words is bag of words nothing too complex we will kind of see it when we get to tf idea algorithm nevertheless uh, that's it for this section and uh, i'll see you in the next section